My country was invaded, yours was colonized, yet our ancestors shed blood and tears whilst laying in fear under the flag that we didn't ask to come. We gave away our talib, our land, you gave away Oranga Tiratanga, your rights, the fight that the Tipuna fought would be engraved in the heart of the Tamariki to this day. Tititi Waitangi signed in 1840 the belief that two cultures could come together to create a country of peace. The Declaration of the Republic of Ireland signed in 1919, 80 years on, but repeating a similar scene. So who would have thought that after 100 years, a 16-year-old white girl would need to be standing here, trying to abolish a system that oppressed individuals because of the complexion of their pigment. I boarded a plane at the age of seven, both luggage and a promise in hand, that I was immigrating to Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud, a place of opportunity, education, Inequality. Whilst I've been privileged enough to have opportunities that my parents never had, and the education that has turned potential capability into a reality, the casual racism, sexism, ageism, ableism, homophobia, and religious discrimination evident every day goes against this belief of my younger self that I was moving to a place of equality. You cannot be against racism if you reshare a post your Instagram story about the death of George Floyd to make you look like one of the good white people. But laugh at a joke that belittles your Asian peer. Then not only are you an inauthentic individual, but you are a part of the issue that is racial discrimination in Aotearoa. You see, racism isn't just the jokes, the comments, the bias. It is also the silence and the avoidance. It isn't enough to not be racist. You must be actively against racism in everything you do. If you were disgusted when you hear a mother speaking your native language to a child, you are racist. If you move across the street and you see a person of colour walking behind you, you are racist. If you avoid eye contact, on eye contact with someone who wears a cultural cloth, a kimono, a sari, a sarong, a tapa cloth, a kafia, a kurta, a tunic, a yamaka, then you too are racist. But why should you be infuriated when you were the symbol of the oppressor and not that of the oppressed? It is your privilege to be racist, a privilege we abuse and a privilege that simply should not exist. Simply because of the colour of your skin, you were given societal advantages whether you are aware of them or not. It's as if this Pākehā privilege has polluted the water which runs through our awa, deforest the landscape of our mowing it, and held its head high against the iwi of this whenua. Racism has become so accepted within our society that it's often our subconscious thoughts. This is not an excuse, but a tool. In order to hold ourselves and others accountable, we need to be constantly conscious about what we're thinking, what we're speaking, and how we're acting, making sure it's something our nation as a collective can be proud of. Since first becoming educated on the issue of racism, I recognise what a double standard racism encompasses within our borders. That although I am the daughter of immigrants because of the colour of my skin I was let in, not only let into a nation but into society and their norms, that I was seen to be more Kiwi than that of a third generation Pakistani New Zealander, who was born and grew up in this nation, paid this government's taxes and has never left the country. So now I ask you, what does a true Kiwi person look like? Is it their physical characteristics or their personal traits, their complexion or their compassion? But how do we stay hopeful for the future of race relations in New Zealand? Just look around. The Black Lives Matter matches, the protests, the petitions, the campaigns. It's evident the youth are leading the way. However, we have been for centuries. It will not be until we are uplifted members of society that true enduring change can then occur. Mol on Uyghur, August Tedford, she uplift the youth and she will come. We do not want to be given a seat at a table. We want a reserved place at all tables where decisions involving us are being made. Ki kotahi te hui, paddle as one. Many factors will influence our journey together on this walker the walker of racial unity. Our direction will be determined by individuals deciding not to be bystanders to racism and to call out the derogatory actions of others. Our pace will be determined by educating communities about what is and what is not destructive. You see, somebody's upbringing is not a fault of their own, but their continued racist attitudes are. 
And lastly, the size of our rocket, for many hands make light work. I am not the first person to tell you that racism is wrong, and I will not be the last person to tell you that racism is wrong. However, I hope there comes a day where we are paddling as one, in one walker of five million committed, kind individuals, and not one person is left ashore. So I ask you, will you step onto our walker? Thank you.